Um, you, you mentioned data and you mentioned, and obviously something that is very close to my heart in terms of the way that I believe that the audit looks completely different if you are going in a digital data-driven approach rather than perhaps the more traditional way. Where are some of the areas that you believe data can make the biggest impact to the audit approach, Al? Well, you know, it, I mean, the biggest impact, in my view, are, are generally the largest areas of the audit. I mean, in other words, if I'm thinking of a commercial enterprise, it, it's it's ridiculous that, that we're not using all of the data that is captured as inventory transactions take place, as sales and receivables uh, occur, uh, purchases and payables take place. I mean, if, if I think of commercial, I think of the big three, you know, purchases, payables, inventory and sales and receivable and, or inventory and cost of sales. And then of course, receivables and, and, and revenues. And, uh, and there is so much power there. And, and then the, the, the thing that's really oftentimes not paid attention to is, is that they all work together. And so there's an integration of it. And so I can leverage all of this. The general ledger has tremendous amount of data in it. And it's like most firms will use sometimes some data to do some quote journal entry testing, but the, it, 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 that's just scratching the surface. I mean, it, you have to drill into it and say, how, does, how do transactions take place? When I move firms to a data-driven audit, and we go through a debrief on how transactions take place and what, what general ledger accounts are impacted as a result of that transaction. I've had partner after partner come to me after that session and said, Al, I am so embarrassed how little we know about this client. And, uh, and, and so if, if we only know a balance and we go in and sample it, I mean, and we can get on a whole discussion on what a, what a, a challenge sampling is and, and how reliable quote it is. But at the end of the day is, is you don't learn really that much about the business when you, when you do it that way. And so there is so much power in the data and the tools that are out there are, are so powerful that, that all we have to do is, is take the time to understand what we want to accomplish find the tool and the technique that can help us accomplish it, and then let the younger staff go with it and, and, and explore it because it's amazing. And, uh, and I have found situations where the, 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 that it's sort of like the staff gone wild when they see all this data. And sometimes you have to throttle them back because they want to try every possible gyration of this data. And I said, well, the, you know, we still have to do an audit within a certain reasonable time frame, so we, we can't look at a million different scenarios. But but you you so you love the enthusiasm. It's just a matter of right sizing it to do this. But I I think of the big three as receivables and receivables inventory and payables and the other side the income statement the expenditures and the purchases and and, and sales. So. And I think to your point on on sampling, Al, the way I always like to, to think of, of this, I think sampling to me, at best, you're going to achieve compliance and your client's going to view what you're doing as a compliance activity. There is no value to them in you trying to suggest something from looking at such a small sample of revenue transactions or, you know, other other areas to achieve that that audit checklist compliance. To me though, once you get into the data, you are representing a, an objective and an independent interrogator of their information. And, and you are able to do something beyond what they can do. I think this is some, some auditors, some accounting firms kind of sit there and go, well, my client already has data analytics tools, they've got dashboards. So what am I gonna honestly be able to tell them that they don't already know? And I think they're, they're really undervaluing the role that they play as an accounting firm, a CPA firm who works with multiple other organizations. So can give that, that entity a, a viewpoint on their business that they don't have internally and say, well, I'm going to compare you to other businesses in the retail sector, or I'm going to compare you to other manufacturers that we work with. 
And I think that as soon as you're in the data, your audit approach naturally gravitates closer to something that the client's going to get value from. If you're just picking at needles in haystacks, you will not be able to tell them anything. But if you are starting and immersing yourself in their business, you, you start to look at transaction flows. You start to look at how these transactions correlate to the control environment that's in place. You start to really understand how this balance came to be rather than what this balance represents at the year end. So for me, I think that, that step into the data, and, and like you say, you know, the general ledger should be used for far more than just journal entry testing in terms no of question. the approach. That's, the, that's a huge untapped resource in most audits because most auditors are already getting all of the transactional detail from their client. If they're not, they really need to very quickly. But certainly in, in, in markets like the US, that access to the data is, is there. It's probably in some horrible formats in terms of the reports that the client pulls out of the general ledger system. It's not in the easiest to work with format. But, but to me, there's a, a, an untapped resource there, which is how can we use that core data set in as many different places of the audit to act as our spine and our way that we base our audit approach and then what else can we add to the mix beyond that 